Hello everyone, this presentation is going to be presented by me, Muhammad Zaid Abdul Razak, my fellow teammates, Zahur Ahmed Tahmid and Sheikh Saddad Mahmood. Bengal Delta, the largest delta in the world, is Thai dominated and created by three rivers, Ganga, Brahmaputra and Meghna. It is bounded by the Indian Shield in the west, the Burin Tract in the north and the Tipera surface in the east. The main progradation of the delta is continuing to the south into the Bay of Bengal. This map shows us the active and inactive parts of the Bengal Delta. The western inactive delta covers an area of about 31,500 square kilometers. The eastern active delta covers 15,000 square kilometers and progressing towards the south. The processing of the delta began some 125 million years ago after the fragmentation of the Gondwana land since the early Cretaceous is still continuing after the collision of the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. In this figure, we can see lower elevation on the eastern and southeastern side of the basin. Sediments accumulated there and created the delta. We can divide the evolutionary process into three steps and these are origin of the delta or proto-delta, transitional delta and modern delta. In this stage, the deposition of the sediments occurred in the marine environment and the Bolpur formation, Ghatal formation, Jalangi formation and Slate Limestone formation were formed that time. This process began after the collision between the plates. In this period, Bengal deep sea fan began to accumulate due to the increased sediment load carried by the turbidity currents. In the transitional delta period, Cretaceous tertiary evolution occurred. In this figure, we can see the prehistoric position of the Bengal basin region which was drifting with the Indian plate and then acquired its present position. Here are the three tectonic provinces of the Bengal delta. Tectonic province 1 is situated on the northwestern side of the hinge zone, Tectonic Province 2 is in the southern part of the band delta after the transition zone. Tectonic Province 3 is the CTFB or Chittagong Tipura Fault Belt. Here is the east-west cross section of the Bengal Basin for a better understanding of the major tectonic and crustal features. From this chart, we can see sedimentation phases are divided into five phases. The first two phases occurred before the collision. Phase 3 and 4 occurred during the collision and after the collision, phase 5 occurred. At this stage, a major eustatic sea level fall occurred and the delta continued to grow in a relatively stable tide dominated environment. In this time, the sea level was extended and the rivers were in the progradational or valley cutting stage. The Bengal delta, like all other modern delta, was primarily shaped during the Holocene period. This Holocene evolution is divided into five stages. The low stone scenario after the Blastocene glacial age, the onset of warming, the commence of delta development, delta development during the rapid sea level rise, maximum Holocene transgression, and delta progradation. Now, this figure is showing the principal features of the late quaternary evolution of the Bengal delta. The lateritic uplands were gradually covered with active floodplains during this time. Here, this figure explains the sequence stratigraphy of Holocene deposits in the Bengal Delta. The low stone deposits were the early Holocene deposits, then the transgressive deposits, and at the end were the high stone deposits. This chart summarizes all the stratigraphic facies that are found in Bengal Delta. River shifting plays a major role in building, shaping and defining the characteristics of a delta. This figure shows the evolution of the delta and the major river course shifts in the last century. Here we can see in 1776, the Brahmaputra and the upper Milna moved through a single channel and connected with Podda. In 1840, we can see that these two divided and the Brahmaputra moved westward and connected with Ganga on the northern region and the upper Milna flowed separately and connected with the Podda in the south. Some seismologists believe that this change happened due to the 1787 Dauke earthquake, and some sedimentologists believe that the change happened over a large scale evolution for a long period of time. Over here we can see the gradual movement of Ganga from west to east and Brahmaputra from east to west and the positions of their estuaries in each time period. Ganga's delta building moved eastward from here and Brahmaputra's moved westward. 
In current time, they merge together and connect it with the ocean through the Noakhali Feni River, which is our current depot center. The net accretion of Meghna estuary over the last 250 years is shown in this graph. We can see the accretion rate bumped into 1950s, which may be a consequence of the Assam earthquake. Since then, the rate is decreasing till now. The progression of the delta was towards the south, but it was accelerated drastically due to the Assam earthquake in 1950. Same happened for the shifting across east-west. The delta first progressed from west to east. Later, from 1840 to 1943, there was almost no east-west progression of the delta, and due to the Assam earthquake, the delta very quickly shifted towards the west and still progressing into the west at a lower rate than that of the 1950. In the meantime, the distributaries within the basin also shifted in the west due to channel evolution. Now the question arises, what is the future of this basin? Well, from the basin reconstruction, it is predicted that most of the oceanic crust of the Bay of Bengal will be gone due to the oblique subduction of the Indian plate northwards in about 30 million years. The basin would then form a foreland basin in the area. The GBM delta system will occupy the Bay of Bengal Basin and the new depot center will shift to in the Andaman Sea. Meanwhile, the present day delta deposit would form a large scale mountain belt due to the tectonic movement of the Indian Plate and the Burmese Plate.